Welcome to this segment on cryptography. In this case, we're going to focus on the most simple of all the uh, algorithms used to encrypt data, which is the Caesar cipher. This is completely weak, as are all the uh, encryption methodologies we're going to review here, because the focus for talking about these is their use in puzzles and games, such as that being run by Satoshi's Treasure. So just wanted to make people aware of the different tools that the puzzle makers might have available to them so we can think about what we would want to respond with or want to recognize and be able to pull apart rather easily. The Caesar cipher itself is very old. It came to us from over 2,000 years ago. It's attributed to Julius Caesar and in no small part, I think, to his description of its use in his records on the Gallic Wars. And to make it easier for us and faster to do both the decryption and to show you how it works, there's a fantastic book that I used when I was studying this called Cracking Codes with Python by Al Swigert. So I used a lot of his sample programs as a place to start, spruced them up a little bit with some additional data capture capabilities just to make it easier on me as I was trying to reuse the program. I'll be leaving a link to the book in the description below. When Julius Caesar originally used this cipher, the way he and his generals and other folks he was communicating with used it was to simply take the alphabet and shift it by three places. The letter A would translate over to the letter D. There's a limit being the number of symbols, in this case letters, in the set. If you were to use an offset greater than 26, which is of course the number of letters in the English alphabet. What we do is subtract 26 until you wind up with a number that was less than 26, and from there you do the standard translation. So just be aware that there's a reason why deeper in the code you may see on the screen here, uh, a need to handle you know, what, is a, what does the wraparound look like? How do we get to a more manageable figure that we could then perform the offsets against? So let's take a look here first at the tool, just the basic Caesar cipher. We're going to encrypt. I want to say thank you for watching. Armchair Adventures. And now we need to choose an offset. Because I mentioned three, and that's what Caesar used, so we're going to put three in. So the message appears here in red, and to make it a little easier to see what's going on here, I also had it print out the plain text version of the alphabet, which would be right here. And then applying the offset key gives us the alphabet in green, which tells us what the letters above would map to. And that's how we get these letters here. So in this case, I first said thank you. So T-H-A-N-K, so capital T, maps to a capital W. H, lowercase over here, maps to a lowercase K. Yep, that's what we see there. I'll let you do the rest. But now, we could do anything, really. So let's try this, and we're going to encrypt and we're going to input a message to be transformed, which is going to be cryptography is fun. I'm going to use another offset just to prove the point. We use three the first time. What about this time we go with uh, 20? The same thing happens here. We've got A mapping to U and so forth. And our first, first letter was C for cryptography. So I've got my C. W just as expected. It's kind of fun that we've got these symbols like the exclamation point mapping to letters. So the lowercase r in cryptography right there maps to the exclamation point. So let's say we received this message. It's already copied to the clipboard. What would we do next? Well, we have to decrypt it, don't we? So I'm going to do decryption and I'm going to give it the message we just received and we know that the offset is 20 so we'll put that in and it says cryptography is fun just as expected so now we can encrypt a message we can decrypt a message I think we've also proven the point if you think about it that there's only 
60 odd keys available to us because once you get to the point where you would wrap around you just it's, it's basically zero and a would map to a again so there's a finite number of keys that we can have here because everything remains in alphabetical order there are more sophisticated substitutions that we'll talk about in a future segment but for now we're going to focus on the caesar and the fact that it can be cracked here's the cracker program so let's let's play with that for a second let's get this same encrypted message Okay, now I'm going to say python cracker.py. I'm going to paste in my encrypted message and we're going to walk through every single possible key. I actually added a half second pause between each key because it just scrolls. It's, this is a trivial amount of work for a modern computer. But now we can see as we rotate through all of these, key number 20 gives us the message we were looking for. So it's very easy for a crypto analyst like ourselves in this case, we're going after um, challenges and puzzles to identify with modern computing that cryptography is fun is your message. Key number 20, so that's 20 offset. All the way down to 65, we started with zero because computers start counting with zero. Proving out what I said before, that there are 66 symbols in the set then we can offset any number of characters within that range and encrypt our message. But still there's only 66 possible keys, so as if you are aware that the cipher is in use, very easy to pull it apart. So now the question is, how do we make our program more intelligent so that it'll filter out all the nonsense and give us, give us back information that's actually likely to need our attention? So there's a module that was that was provided in the book and it says detect English and there's 45,000 word dictionary that we can use to parse all the data that we were pulling out of these decrypted values to see if it makes an English phrase and there's um, there are certain assumptions based on word percentage letter percentage uh, so 85% of the content would be letters rather than symbols when you're done. And at least 20% of the words should be in the dictionary file. So that is a very low number when you think about it. But it lets us have something to discriminate against so that we don't wind up having to look through 66 lines of code. In this case, a very small number. So when you go to another cipher that has a much higher number of possible keys, such as the next one in the series, which has... 1320 we don't have to look through each of those possible outputs in order to see if, there, if we think there's any English involved we can use the, some programmatic approaches to filter the ones that are clearly not English style so let's take a look here at the enhanced version so cracker E I made this and called it enhanced and I of course added more display in line with what I've already showed you it gives us also the test for whether something is likely English. So let's do that. Let's do Python cracker E. Alright. So here's my message. So whenever we have the computer testing whether it's likely English, this goes by with blazing speed. Modern computers are so fast I did not insert any pauses in the program because there was no purpose we only wanted to see the one result maybe two if there was something that was close that would give us something to work with this is very clearly the answer key uh, offset of 20 a readable English phrase here you've got the examples of how this was decrypted it matches up perfectly so that's everything we wanted to talk about regarding the Caesar cipher today that establishes a solid foundation for us on how the Caesar cipher works. There are more ciphers that we'll be looking at in future segments. We'll look at substitution that doesn't follow an alphabetic pattern. We'll look at other algorithms that use this as a foundation but use it maybe multiple times. There's a lot of transformations that gradually increase the numbers of keys. We will stick with those that are easily cracked by modern computers talk about some of the methodologies on attacking those. 
and I'll continue to use programming from cracking codes with Python, which I mentioned earlier in the segment, and I will put a link to the book in the description below. Thanks for watching. I appreciate everyone who has subscribed so far. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe. I'm going to continue to publish every Monday at 5 p.m. Eastern. If you want to get a notification when those do get published, hit the bell. Thanks.